Welcome back to the driest of the canyons, where we're going to play Spyro 1 Reignited. You found it. Fe featuring Dry Canyon. Dry Canyon sounded like an SA2 Knuckles level, level for a second. <laughs> but it did it. <laughs> Wait, what's Verge's? Is Verge's level Dry Lagoon? Or is it something else? Um, I think the first Rouge level is a Dry... Yeah, Dry... So yeah, it's, it's Dry Lagoon It's Dry Lagoon and, and Wild Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... Wow. It's the fusion level. With 500% more vultures. Spyro Reignited 4. Wild Lagoon. <laughs> no, no, that, that would be Enter the Dragonfly. Oh. <laughs> oh. We don't want that. No. Uh, actually, no. more rap. I would I would want that because I mean like it would be it would be return it would be under the dragonfly but good. There's no making that game good. The level design no, was can... bad. No, that's Stefan. I think you're on a misconception. If they remade Enter the Dragonfly, it would be Enter the Dragonfly but acceptable. I mean like, like they would they would have to do more work. They would have to do much more work on it than just simply porting the game over with better with like fancier graphics. But I mean like it, it would be something. Yeah. Or they could just make or, a or new that Spyro 4 that was good. Yeah, or at that point, you just make a new Spyro game. New, please. Because so much of Enter the Dragonfly was just kind of just like... You remember that level from the, the first three games? Here's no. one. Kind of like it. Yeah. And then, like, the, the other <laughs> no, thing that you... Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, okay! <laughs> nope! <laughs> I was like, let me wait to start talking until we see what this dragon does. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Um, but yeah, the like the uh, one other thing that always peeved me about Under the Dragonfly was, like, why did every level... I mean, I know why, but every level had, like, 12 eggs or something? It wasn't eggs. It was dragonflies. Dragonflies. Like, why? The reason they were so many was because they cheaped out on the number of levels, but they needed to make the number of collectibles, like, high enough so it didn't look like they were totally cheaping out. So there were nine levels, and each of them had, like, ten dragonflies in them. And, 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 and like, 700, 800 gems. In each. Yes. Yeah, it was... Their, their levels were, like, massive, but also really, like, boring. Yeah, the, the, the game ran like because the game ran like molasses, so it felt longer too. Did you ever have the glitch where like you went uh, into a level and the ground was just forget. gone? Because that <laughs> happened to me. No. I love oh, Alzheimer's Dragon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I forget that. Yeah. I think it was um the I forget what it's called, but the one level that was like, hey, you remember that Honey Speedway and Spyro oh, Three? Oh, no. right. The, so there's a sliding challenge in that level. And it was really hard, or at least it was when I was like 13 or however old I was when the game came out. Um, and so one of the, like I died and then it teleports me to the top and the ground was just gone. And like it was invisible. <laughs> so I was like, wow. what? So I like tried to play it. And of course, like you can't, I can't tell where I'm going. Like I'm dying all over the place. But I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Enter the, the Dragonfly sounds magical. I need to play it someday. <laughs> need is a strong word, but if it ever like falls from the sky and lands in your hands and you don't have to pay money for it, it's worth a shot. Okay. Uh, I, I, th that didn't happen to me, but I remember that level probably like when I when I like played through the whole game to 100 percent it. Uh, that level drew me like the most crazy of trying to find the last couple gems. I think I spent mm -hmm. like. Over, I think I spent like nearly two hours just running around the level trying to find where those last few gems. No, are. Stefan, don't fly there. You don't have the key yet. Oops. Stefan, <laughs> well, I want to get the things first so I can have like the perfectly round <laughs> number and then go back. Oh, you, you're one of those people. Okay. I'm one yeah. of those guys. I gotta do all the exploring first. You? No. <laughs> I think I would literally actually. I know we're, we're talking about two meme games. It's okay to invoke it. I think I'd rather play Sonic 06 than Enter the Dragonfly. Um, like, I, I consider Enter the Dragonfly that... <laughs> it's like a void of fun, where at least with Sonic 06, I can find some fun in I've that. Never, I've never played 06, so I'm not sure. You know, You're not missing out. I yeah, found... that's, that's kind of how I feel, but I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of I feel was... like... Uh, I mean... Enter the Dragonfly is real bad, but like, if you squint, you can pretend that it's a spiral you're game. You're deluding yourself 
into thinking you're playing a decent Spyro game. Enter the Dragonfly is boring. <laughs> 06 6 is at least fascinating. I'd play both. I also feel like 06 6 is longer. <laughs> oh, good point. True, I'll, play, mean, it's like, I'll play yeah. Enter the Dragonfly then. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a fair point. <laughs> oh, 06 is easier to go through. Oh, that's one of those wimpy better music. You are oh. a good No, that's not one of the wimpy dragons strike. in the original. I was born to right. <laughs> He has a kink collar and a whip. Get him out of here. He's, he's, he's got a rattlesnake Don't tail for shame. some reason. <laughs> this is a kids game. I'll keep <laughs> it. Is it if a kids game to really? In the teen version will talk, but until then. <laughs> You mean the Legend of Spire? No, the Legend of Spire, that, that, that was E10. <laughs> this is E10. E10. Oh. In Europe, that will be adult. Peggy 7. <laughs> Peggy 7. <laughs> Those are some mature 8 year olds in Europe. <laughs> Peggy 3. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about that, like. To me, the shorthand is always the Master Chief Collection thing we were talking about last part, where, like, you could push a button and the graphics would go back to normal. And I'm thinking about that, and it's like, if they would have done that, which apparently they had it working, that would have meant, like, legitimate widescreen Spyro 1 through 3s, because those were 4 by 3 games, and that's how they were meant to run. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to play the so game I'm... like that, because it would feel weird, because I'm playing the original games, but they control better. And you said, Chris, you said there's another game that actually did that? Because that sounds like really, I, I don't know of any games that have done that, but... Yeah, uh, Halo 1 and 2 gotcha. both got remakes, and at any point you could push a button and it would just go back to normal. Um, one recently I've been playing, they remade a Sega Master, I think it's a Master System game, uh, called Wonder Boy Dragon's the Dragon's Trap. Trap. Dragon's Trap. Wonder Boy. Yeah, so at any point you can like push a button and it'll play the retro music, and like you can hit R2, and the screen will just wash over with the 8-bit stuff instead of like... They made it look like a cartoon in that game. So, um, to go even further it. back, the Monkey Island Special Editions did pretty much a similar thing, but they also built uh, the new stuff on top of the old code too. So mm, okay. yeah, and, and, and Spyro does have so like like say in the menu you can change to play the original uh, the original uh, Stuart Copeland music, or you can do the now. New... I suspect that's only because they cut out this feature. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that might be. Or it's like we're like they, they were like they're like, oh, we have the music in. Might as well be able. May as well make it so you're able to switch music, and you can switch and, and you can change it so like if you want to have dynamic sound yeah. on or off. I'm thankful for the option. Crash and Sane didn't give me uh, the original soundtrack, so yeah. thanks, Spyro. I mean, I, I I keep I keep the new soundtrack because the new soundtrack is all really good, and I'm like I'm playing the new game. I might as well have the new soundtrack. If I want to listen to the old soundtrack, I'll play the old game. <laughs> but for a fourth playthrough or so, I'd like to play the original. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. it's good. It's good to have the option. I always yeah, like I, when I just, games yeah. give you the option. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. I've played that game for nine months, so alternating between those, that's nice. Yeah, it's good to have, mix it up now and then. I'm, I'm so glad that game stopped with those events. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those weirdos who I not only really like the new soundtrack, because a lot of Spyro fans really prefer the old one, but I am one of the super weirdos who actually likes having the dynamic stuff turned on, so yeah, that same. it's like shifting throughout the stage. To me, that's a dumb immersion thing, and I think it's really cool. But my other issue is that with the original soundtrack, the, um, the way PS1 music comes through my TV speakers in comparison to this soundtrack, which was engineered and mixed for more modern speakers and stuff like that, there you just don't get like the punch and it feels like it's all in the back center of the soundscape, like hiding, and it just doesn't work for me. You mean using the old I soundtrack? Get that. Yeah, yeah. Like when you, That's when you switch to that, yeah, it kind of hides just because like it's not uh... really. They didn't like remaster the oh. old soundtrack for like a new mix. That's so super just... interesting because as someone who doesn't know a lot about that sort of audio engineering stuff, I that's something I never would have considered that like in the same way oh. that like say um, I know with all certain like GBA games, they mm -hmm. were like the colors were made assuming that the screen was not backlit. So they made them pretty vibrant. Yes. And then if you play them on something with a backlight, it looks washed out. Yeah. So I, yeah. I guess it's kind of like that equivalent with audio. I never would have thought of that. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, 
I have a music related question for you guys. Uh oh. Uh, the Spyro soundtracks were never anything special to me, but that's because I never turned the volume up to appreciate them. Mm. What makes the Spyro soundtrack special to you guys? How's a dragon supposed to flame metal armor anyway? Because it's certainly metal. different. <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes the soundtrack special. Yeah, Dragon Force. Ah, I love Dragon the Force. thing that I can't hear, that makes it special. Good yeah. to know. You know. <laughs> Uh, All right, so I, I'll, I would say that I just think, like, yeah, just the the kind of variety of the uh, ambiance. Uh, it, it's very – the music is very fast-paced, but it also has kind of a upbeat, energetic tone for it, but can also be kind of uh, downbeat and menacing. So what you're saying, I need to play this game on my Switch with headphones on. Yeah, like, listen to the music, and the, at least the the original music was done by Mas by the master that is Stuart Copeland of the Police, and he's mwah. he does he does such good stuff. Yeah, I, I liked his I like his Sparrow soundtracks a lot because, like Stefan said, like you know he played I mean he played each level and then wrote the music, so he got an idea of like how he thought it should feel. And That's to me, super cool. Oh, um, his that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, he. I really like the emphasis he puts on bass in his music, and he follows back on a oh, few recurring bass I have bass always lines. trouble with hearing bass, so that makes sense. Ah, yeah, that might be a part of it. Because, mm -hmm. like, Dark Hollow's bass, oh, that's one of my favorite bass lines ever. <laughs> so it's just stuff like that. Um, he's a drummer, but, like, he's a weird drummer, so his percussion styling is very interesting. I've noticed he composed the Spyro soundtracks. Yes, and I and I mean, like in comparison, I mean, he didn't actually compose the music, but uh, Devo's Mark Mothersbaugh was one of the producers on the Crash soundtrack. And if you hear that, it's like, oh yeah, you can you can kind of hear his influence uh, in that music. Yeah, so it's like to me, it's just like the Spyro soundtracks are very unique because while they feel made for Spyro, it's also just Stuart Copeland's style, which. No other video game music is like that because no one else is him, if that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. to me, it's like it's not only a thing where yeah. it defines the character, but it's also just a very unique game soundtrack in comparison to anything else. So, to me, it's just special because, like, I think it's catchy, I think it sets an atmosphere, I think it's very unique and different. But it's also like. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Time travel! You, you hit the Master fly Chief button! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I think this was a Clancy br Brown yeah. dragon. Might be. There's a lot of Clancy Brown dragons. No, th 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 that 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 is the one. That is the one uh, problem with both the Insane trilogy and this that they didn't get Clancy Brown back. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have minded if they brought Clancy Brown back for Uka Uka, but I think Lex Lang should have uh, stayed as Cortex. Yeah, like, Le Lex Lang does such a good job as well. It's just. It's it's, a, it's because it's Clancy Brown and it's like we know like what he we. However, what he I do really enjoy John DiMaggio as Uka Uka in Insane Trilogy because geez, he does a good job. The animation doesn't hurt either. Yeah, I, I will say yeah, in comparison, I mean, because it's it's different people working on it, but I think the the animation of in the cutscenes oh, yeah. in uh, Insane Trilogy I think is better than in uh, these these cutscenes. In general, I feel the animation is better, but. Uh, the voice work is a bit worse. It's not as threatening. I'd also say why I really like the uh, I really like the like the mu the remixes and the music overall in these games. I think in comparison, the remixes in the Crash uh, Insane version are like I think I've, there are more better remixes in Crash that kind of feel unique in their own way in comparison to the ones in Spyro. I think I can agree. <laughs> Like uh, in Cra like, like, yeah, like well, Crash, like Crash has both. Crash has uh, uh, what what is it? Uh, the the uh, the uh, D Death Root of Cold Hard Crash was one of my favorite songs like ever, and like that that remix is perfection. Whereas I don't think there's any there there isn't any remix in this game that like truly wowed me. They're like oh they're all really good, but nothing that was like holy shit I need to listen to this like so many I times. I think it helps because Stewart returns. I think. I think he, he mostly, well, Stuart he returned, returned in, like, a consulting role. Yeah, and I, I think, think he, he mostly just listened yeah. to it and said, yo, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that sounds all right. <laughs> Which, again, I mean, it's like, you're ba he's basically just, it's basically just the same music, it's just with different instruments now, so there wasn't yeah. much he was he could do on other than maybe compose a couple new stuff. Yeah, especially Which, again, like, with, yeah. like, 
if you consider this game's development time, like, it was basically just one person reinterpreting, like, 300 plus musical tracks, so I can kind of give mm. it a pass for not experimenting too much, but mm -hmm. yeah, it seemed like the direction especially was more like, let's fill out the sound and adjust some instruments, you know, to make it sound more like actual instruments, because sometimes in the original games you couldn't tell what things were supposed to be, yeah. but yeah, there's like... I really like this um, interpretation, but there's definitely, like you're saying, there's nothing where it's like, oh, that's a better take. It's like, oh, it just sounds like a more realized thing. Right, with Crash, I think there's certain things like the Dingo Dial boss theme. To me, that's like a definite market improvement. And I feel like it interprets the track kind yeah, of in an interesting I... way. But yeah, and you come back to this, it's like, oh, it's nice. But I... There's one boss track I remix in Crash I didn't really like, but it doesn't come Komodo Bros. I don't I didn't like that mm. remix they've made. Uh, I don't, uh, I come to my yeah, come to my mind uh what is it? The uh the uh oh, and the uh, the uh, embryo boss fight in one I think is uh, is excellent. Mm. Whoops. Oh no. Uh oh uh, You fell in the poo gas. Oopsie doodles. Oh I don't know why, I just I think uh, like when when it goes and it says reigniting, like when it's when it's loading. I don't know why. I just like I just like it saying reigniting. I, I do find it a little weird how slow it is. And like most of the time it's fine. When you're failing at uh treetops, it's a little annoying. Then it's annoying because you're seeing it so many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's your first death for that playthrough, it just—it definitely feels. I guess it, I guess it just has to do with how the game is programmed, but it definitely feels like you're slower to respawn compared to the PS1 games. Oh, have you tried? Have you guys tried cheats uh, for the new Reignited trilogy? Uh, new no, one. I haven't tried any cheats. You know, what? I tried a few. I tried Squidboard, had a good time. And Spyro Three, I got the Squid oh, Squidboard going works. Nice. Yeah. Good. Um, Sunglasses Spyro is one I played through Spyro 1 on. Oh, they added oh, Sunglasses yeah. Spyro? There's also a oh, Rainbow. Oh, yeah. oh, that's so good. Not only Sunglasses Spyro, they also added Rainbow <laughs> Sunglasses <Dang>. Spyro. <laughs> Gay <that> Spyro. <laughs> ice Cabin was always a weird one, because it's just like, oh, we're in this desert world, and suddenly he's an ice <laughs> level. The, yeah, the ambiance is completely different. And, like, what does this have to do with war? <laughs> what does that have to do with war? Where else would it fit? No. Um, Where else would it fit, though? Uh, Magic Crafters? Dreamweavers? Yeah. Probably, yeah. Maybe there was too much dreams or it's magic. Too, it's so. too realistic for Dreamweavers. That's one thing I love about the Dreamweavers levels. They're so crazy. Yep. <laughs> Ice yeah, World. Too yeah, realistic Dreamweavers and Magic Crafters kind of blend together for me anyway. Like I forget like what, what levels are in which world because they're all kind of similar. I remember the Dreamweavers levels because they're all so hard. <laughs> like because yeah. it's yeah. it's Caution. Dark Cavern, which is the one with the lights gimmick, which terrified me as a child. Um, and, oh yeah, the the Tower of the Turtles. Yep, and Lofty Castle, which is the one with the fairies and like the guys hanging from the balloons. And then oh, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it's the one with the reanimated knight like armor. Um, right. What's I that think called? That is Haunted Towers. Oh, Haunted Towers. Those. Yes, that's the yeah. name. That's the name. Haunted Towers. And then Jacques is the boss of <laughs> Jacques. Dream sucks. <laughs> he's the he's such a bad Jacques. boss. He's the worst. Whatever he's supposed to be. Yeah. He's a jack in the box. <laughs> Get it? Jock, Jock, Jock in, in the, the box. box. Get it? Ah. Yeah. yeah. He's <laughs> kind of he was kind of terrifying in the original because it was just like he was all teeth. <laughs> um. Oh, surprise! You made that. I always get that from a different fantasy point. Uh, I think I just took a detour because I'm like, you know, screw it, whatever. I can make my way back. This is an easy level. Well, that Phantom's point wasn't too far from where you flew, but still. I'm thinking about where else the Silva could have gone, and like, there was a scrapped world. Um, it was for like, the machinist. Oh so... god! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Why? He said the thing, so he must he, be punished. He did nothing wrong. <laughs> what? You should wear war dragons that say thank you for releasing <laughs> me. You should bomb the guy that subverts <laughs> it. At the end game, there's a dragon that says thank you for rescuing me. You should bomb him. That's a good idea, actually. Let's do it. But Spyro, yeah, it's great to see you. But, but I gotta, gotta go. go. <laughs> but that I gotta so go. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. 
That's we're, the we're, second best dragon in the game. We're always gonna see it at the end, but I, I kind of cringed at the uh, at the at the at the you gotta believe one because it's like they they they, they you, you, you you took the subtle joke and you made it obvious, and it's like okay, we get it. Obvious to who? Yeah, gonna say. What kid this generation has played Prayer for the Rapper? Yeah. But you look, he, he does the whole ha <laughs> ha wink at the audience, you know, like yeah, we yeah, get I it. know, I know. The delivery wasn't as funny either. Yeah, we remember the rapping dog. Yeah, for, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like uh, Tom Kenny's performance in this better than Alice Rocky's. Like, I, I think Tom Kenny overall is a better Spyro, but at least in comparison with these, with this dialogue, hmm. I don't know what I like more. To me, it feels like he's always been Spyro in this game. If, if, I guess he just fits right into me. I guess. I think he because it, it feels more like he's he's trying to sound a certain way rather than just being Spyro. Uh, I wonder if he was directed Spyro. to like try and sound a little younger. Are wearing armor. Oh and in the ice yeah, cave, probably. Armor can make their feet Getting him some slippery. nice video editing <laughs> practices there. <laughs> How do I get good at Adobe After Effects? <laughs> I am good. I'm not good at Adobe After Effects. Um. But yeah, I wonder if he was directed to try and sound a little younger in Spyro One, because mm -hmm. that was always the vibe I got from the pre like in the PS One version that Spyro sounded a little younger. But I think that and that was partly just the v like me. the VA the VA's voice. Um, but I wonder if it was a deliberate choice in the direction for the remasters. Awesome. There's all yeah. There's also the whole thing of like that Kenny would he voiced uh, some he voiced like some like background NPC characters in two and three as well. While in in reignited he they just stick with him with Spyro, Professor, and uh, Sergeant Bird. Uh, so yeah. like I'm... so like all the so like so like all the like all of the, the the gear grinders sound like SpongeBob. They're not SpongeBob anymore. The sexy ice penguins don't sound sexy. Yeah, anymore. I miss yeah, SpongeBob they, flies. But we, which is a shame because, like, yeah, because he, he brought so much energy to those. But I guess it's because since Kenny is such, I mean, now like that was that was before SpongeBob, so he was like a smaller name. But now he's such a big name. It's like we'll only pay for him to do like yeah. the major roles, <laughs> yeah. and we'll just stick with our other guys to do the small. Yeah. But it's kind of like uh, I know what. Uh, 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 Kid Icarus brought this up in his uh, video on Spyro, where it's like some of the a lot of the NPC, like they're the voices, they don't sound as kind of animated in comparison. Like they just sound very, like you. I think he used the Ratchet PS4 as an example. They just kind of felt very like stilted, just kind of like you're reading the dialogue, you're reading it well, but they don't sound as like characteristic or animated mm -hmm. as they did in the original games. I miss those old Ice Duck voices from that Ice World in Spyro 3. Yeah, where he's like, yeah, like, man, like, they're all so chill, and like, yeah. come on, man, let, let, let's, let's just go, help, help me out And they out sound just like normal yeah. people now. They're so sexy Aww. sounding in the original. They, they changed the, aw, that, that makes me sad, because I really liked those guys. They changed the whole I'm lot ready. more, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, those weird, like those, like those weird noises those stickies make. Now they just sound kind of like Jamaican, I think. From Spyro yeah, like 3. The, the, the accents are much more... The voices are diluted, but the accents are much more exaggerated. Uh. You know what I like about the Medieval remake? Except for the narrator and Sir Daniel Fortescue, the main character, they keep just... They just keep all the vo old voice actors. All the voice... Uh, all the old, or, old voice clips. That's an interesting way to do it. Although that, that that obviously like you want to be careful with things because like 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 kind of how we mentioned, <laughs> I love oh Splinter Cell. <laughs> you just needed a not with, didn't you? I just wanted to break things, but it's kind of like like, like what we too. mentioned in our the, the Mewtwo Strikes Back video where you, you you talked about how like the other people having the same voices that they did in the original movie kind of felt weird. Yeah. So it's like there is kind of thing is like you want to have something different, but if you do too similar and like have it too different, it just has the, that weird dissonance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like these, these modern remake. I am so nitpicky <laughs> about these modern remakes. Spire One is and Medieval are like the remakes I have the least nitpicks about. <laughs> Basically, the answer is that none of us are like none. None of us are happy. None of us are free from sin either. <laughs> Never.
So, uh, so uh, Lean Dirt, uh, where where can we find you uh, online? Where can the, where can the uh, viewers find you online? First off, it's Lean Fuck. Dirt. Um. <laughs> I hate myself. Um, well, I don't have re- you really have a YouTube channel uh, to promote, so I'll take advantage of the fact that FTCR and the Puyo Puyo fan base are a f- perfect fan diagram circle to promote a fanfic I'm writing. It's called an ordinary Puyo Puyo high school f- uh, AU. I will put that in the description. Yeah. I don't have anything more significant to promote, so that's why I'm doing something stupid like this. I'm collabing with the Wario lore master, the guy who knows the most about Wario on the internet, it seems. <laughs> because the Wario fan base and the Puyo Puyo fan base are also a perfect fan diagram <laughs> circle. Explains so much. <laughs> Catherine. Yes. What yeah. would you promote if oh, you sorry. were on an FTCR? <laughs> Let's <laughs> call it an FTCR promote. How do I word that? That way, but this way it came out. Well, if I were. <laughs> if you were to do it. Uh, you can find my random ramblings on Twitter at Dr. Catherine. Yeah. And I'll have that link down below as well. Okay. Tune back next time for more Spyro. Eventually, at some point in the future. <laughs> Thank you for releasing me from life.